Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're taking things a little bit differently and we're not really actually playing Minecraft today. Instead, I'm going to run through with you some of the things that I use in my playthrough. I've got a couple questions in my comment section about the kind of things that I use, uh, both visual and mod wise. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to just give you guys a little rundown on what I'm using, some of the settings that I use and some of the resource packs and mods. So I want to start things off maybe with the visual side of things because the visual is probably the more important one that most people are interested in. Mods wasn't so heavily questioned as most of them are pretty straightforward and I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't want to get too bogged down into the details of the mods. I'm probably going to give you a little bit more of a rundown of that. But today is going to be mainly focused on the visual aspect of things that I use. So let's get things started with the probably the more interesting part of what I'm using. Now as you guys have probably noticed I use a BIOS as, so as you guys have noticed, I use BSL Shader Pack, and BSL Shader Pack is a, a, a shader pack that I really love, but unfortunately, in my opinion, it required a few tweaks to make, you know, a little bit more perfect. Now, BSL is a pretty good shader pack, but unfortunately, with some things, um, I, I think it's a little bit too in your face and kind of almost kind of removes you from the experience of Minecraft. So I went ahead and made a few changes to it, and I thought it'd be interesting to run through with them with you guys. So let's start off with our first thing that we're using. So when you come over to my shader folder, you'll see there is two current versions of BSL. I have the original version of BSL that I used to use, and I now have a newer version of BSL right here. Now, this new version of BSL is something that I'm going to be trialing for a little while. So if you haven't seen this in any of, any of the new videos, I probably haven't actually converted the ones that you've been watching. So I've actually just made the change quite recently. So this will be something that you probably see in the next few weeks. And um, so, yeah, this is something that you might see more often. This is the original BSL shader pack that I used. But after doing a little bit of tweaking today, I've kind of brought this new BSL pack uh, down into the version that I'm currently using. So I've kind of made all the changes that I did on the original one, along with some other optimizations just to increase FPS and make things run a little bit more smoother. So again, you can see the BSL version pack that I'm using is 7.2.0 pre-1. This is the most current version of BSL. I actually would advise that you go ahead and try and find BSL 7.104. This is the version that I have been using and I'm actually still considering whether or not I'm gonna be carrying on using this one or if I'm gonna go ahead and revert back to BSL 7.1.04.1. The reason for that is the stability of this version is a little bit questionable at the moment. It might be because it's a pre-release, but I am finding there are some glitches. I'm finding that there are some things that I don't necessarily like all that much. And I do see a tank in frame rates a little bit with this one, but we're going to play it out a little bit more. And I'm actually going to run through the settings with you on the new pre-release. And actually, if you see any settings that I run through with you on this one, it's probably applicable to the older one as well, as they have similar options. You just might see a few more removed from the original BSL packs, but you can just use the settings that you see in this one on this one too. One thing I do want to note as well, I'm not going to actually sit here and actually go through each and every reason for why I changed each slider and stuff like that. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown on most of these things. Please use your pause button to copy anything that you want to use yourself. And I would highly encourage that you play around with things a little bit yourself as well and see what kind of suits your your style. Okay, so let's start things off in the visual tab. First thing you're going to see is that pretty much everything here has been left on. Advanced materials has been turned off. I believe these two come off as standard, so I haven't messed around with these. The only reason I changed this is because it was affecting frame rates a little bit, so I ended up turning that off for now. That may or may not change in the future once uh, this actually comes out as a full release. And if there's any FPS changes on that, I might add that back in. But as of right now, we have gone ahead and turned that off. So we start off with the ambient occlusion slider, which has been turned down all the way to 0.5. This is again for uh, reducing some of the more flariness of stuff. Uh, light shaft has been turned down to 0 0.75. Max des uh, desaturation is down to medium instead of uh, full or high. Uh, translucent reflections has been turned off again for, um, for performance reasons. Uh, promo outline and white world. I think this is all original changes. I haven't changed anything myself, but again, you want to make make things kind of same same as mine make sure you turn that off yourself but again if you want to make sure yours is similar to mine go ahead and turn those off yourself now if we go into the advanced materials configuration these are changes that i've made only to this version not into the previous version i'm not sure if it was actually in the previous version but i had to make these changes again because i was finding that the um, frame rate was a lot lower on this one than it was on the previous one so i have gone ahead and changed this again i may go back to the previous version in which case most of these settings will still apply so go ahead and take a note of these and we'll move on from this section so as far as visuals concerned this section is basically uh, everything that i've used 
we'll go into shadows now shadows all i've done is increase the quality uh, sorry the shadow map quality a little bit higher i've increased shadow distance a little bit higher and i think that's the only real changes i made i'm pretty sure colored shadows might be one that i also turned off again that was more just to increase frame rate if we go into sky i don't think i actually made any changes to sky at all i think maybe sky brightness skybox brightness sorry has gone up a little bit but other than that everything else should be the same waving blocks nothing has changed here at all everything is on now post-processing is where a lot of the changes have been made and it's not just in post-processing you're going to see it in uh, color grading and actually a little bit in color as well but we'll get to that in one second so with post-processing i have changed a few things and i'm not sure 100 percent if these are standard i'm pretty sure if it's colored it means i changed them myself so depth of field off motion blur off bloom is the main one that i have turned off as bloom is the thing that kind of adds that really glowy effect that i don't like from coloring uh for me the best thing about the 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 shader pack isn't necessarily the glowiness of everything so i've gone ahead and turned that off along with a lens flare that has also been turned off anti-aliasing on the other version of bsl is actually set to taa and it still gives me very good frame rates but unfortunately it does affect frame rates a little bit in this pre-version so i've gone ahead and turned that down to fxaa but i think you can actually go ahead and turn that off if you're not necessarily too worried about it or if you're using a a less powerful graphics card you can go ahead and turn that off auto exposure is something that i've actually gone ahead and turned on the reason i've turned that on is because when i used to record at night time people used to complain quite a lot that there was it was very hard to see in some of my videos so i went ahead and turned auto exposure on and that way things are a little bit more brighter when you see me flying around at night time for example it makes things a lot more easily visual for you guys uh vignette i f i have no idea how you say this word and this is something i turn off this is usually the thing that leaves the weird uh dark border around the the screen usually something that you see that gets turned off when you hit f1 and you go into the um the no hotbar version that is something that usually turns off at the same time which adds more color or adds more brightness to the edges of the screen so i've gone ahead and turned that off uh depth of field strength i've turned up motion blur strength i've gone ahead and turned down quite significantly you can go ahead and turn this off if anything it may not even be useful to you bloom and lens flare i turned all the way down i don't think they were necessary because i've turned them off anyway but just to be safe i've gone ahead and turned them down to minimum image sharpening is something that i ended up turning all the way up it's just something i found that made a little bit of a difference to the quality of the of the blocks and some of the trees so that was something that i changed myself and if we go into the color grading section of the post-processing, the only changes that I've made here is increasing vibrance to 1.10 and increasing saturation to 1.05. This just adds a little bit more saturation, a little bit more vibrance to the to the world, but actually leaving it down into the standard settings of, of one is actually pretty much good too. So you don't need to worry too much about those. It was just something I actually made a last minute change on more so on this BSL. I think on the other BSL pack I showed you that one doesn't actually have any of those changes. Other than that, no other changes made to this section, so we'll go ahead and move on from post-processing. So color is actually one we're going to come back to in a second because it actually really only takes place in the nether. So we'll go ahead and save that for a second, but let's go ahead and go to world. Now world again is another one that I haven't really made too many huge changes to. So one of the changes that I've made is to turn fog off completely. This is both for the nether and for the overworld. I don't like nether fog. I don't like overworld fog. So I've gone ahead and turned those off. Missive brightness, I've gone ahead and turned down a little bit to 0.9. Other than that, these are all exactly the same and as they should be. So before we head over to the nether and I go through the final color process with you for the for the nether, I kind of wanted to show you what it is that we use for coloring of blocks or coloring of the lights in this world. You may have noticed that the color of things such as end rods or even, um, you know, other basically other lighting blocks they are a little bit different in color if you have a look at the bsl standard the the color that's emitted from these is a lot more white than it is the, the creamy kind of um kind of beige color that you see over here this is probably the most important change to my world and i think the thing that makes the most difference when you look at the lighting of my world this is actually the same settings that i've actually kind of copied over from the previous bsl so if you're using the older one this will work out perfectly for you Again, this is the slider settings that I put on for uh, for BSL on this side. So intensity is one that I seem to have turned up a little bit. So in this case, I've gone from, I think the standard is 0.85 to 1.2. 
and then the rest of these sliders just go ahead and copy them over i don't really have the specifics of why i ended up choosing these these were just some settings i played with on my previous bsl and i found that they would gave me the best results for lighting and honestly i think that makes the biggest of difference to my settings over anyone else's bsl settings and i think with all the lightings that you use it actually gives off the best kind of glow of effect uh, as opposed to the standard really bright white light that you get from the standard version i think this is the best to go with so let's go ahead now and pop into the nether i want to show you some of the the changes to the uh, specific biomes in the nether that i've chosen and um, you can hopefully kind of see a little bit of what, what's going on here so again we're in the basalt deltas you can see the colors very nice not too extreme not too gray uh, not too washed out so this was actually a change that i made but more importantly why i made these changes if i can hopefully get to a soul sand valley um yes is the soul sand valley now you can see that i'm a little bit blue in the soul sand valley and actually this is a much more toned down version of the standard settings that you get from the soul sand valley now i do like the change in 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 environment here i like the fact that you change color but the original settings for bsl's soul sand valley was way too blue and kind of made it look a little bit weird so i've gone ahead and made some adjustments on that again jumping into the option setting here go back into shaders shader options color you want to go dimension color nether color and then you want to choose soul sand valley so this is the soul sand valley settings that i've chosen this is the basalt delta settings that i've chosen this is the crimson forest uh, settings that i've chosen you can see that really the only thing i've done here is tone down the red a little bit and the last is the nether waste the nether waste i found important too i just found things were a little bit too bright and in your face there was a lot going on so i went ahead and turned down the red turned the green down a little bit and the same with the intensity so it's gone from 1 to 0.85 okay so as far as the shader section is concerned that is pretty much that all wrapped up if there's anything that you think that i might have missed or you might want a little bit more information on go ahead and leave that in the comment section down below and i'll try and get to that to you guys individually the next thing to, we're going to get onto is the resource packs that i use now the two more significant changes you've probably seen if you've been watching my let's play world is my glass which i think is the best resource pack that you could possibly get i love this clear glass that i use and the next thing this is probably something that some of you guys already know about depending on how well integrated you are with the minecraft community and that's these weird leaves with the stuff coming out the side of it so let's go have a little look at the resource packs that i have in my system in fact you're going to see here i actually only use two resource packs one of them is called clear glass pack you can find that on the forge website the, the next one i'm using is vanilla tweaks so vanilla tweaks this is obviously one that is a, a little bit questionable because this is going to be something that you have to kind of choose yourself the most important things that i found that i liked from the vanilla tweaks and the most important ones that i kind of always want number one is the the leaves as i mentioned to you here i think this is really cool and i think as long as they keep this feature i'm going to go ahead and use it i believe it's still in testing phases at the moment so it's not 100 percent ready to go second thing is the end rods you can see these end rods have no ends so no start and no end to the end rod you could pile them up and you would never know which side is supposed to be the right one this is absolutely beautiful and one of the things that i almost look forward to as soon as a new version comes out i always wait for the endless end rods that's one of the ones that i can't do without i think it makes end rods way more good looking and way more versatile in builds and yeah overall just a great resource pack to have so anyway as far as the visuals are concerned i believe i've covered pretty much everything that you guys might want to know so we're going to go ahead and move away from the visual aspect of things and we're going to go ahead and check out some of the mods that i'm using okay so we're going to go ahead and go straight into our mod section and we're going to have a quick look at some of the things that i use now out of all of these mods i'm going to surprise you with giving you my favorite one and my favorite mod out of all of these ones is the inventory sorter at this point in my game i feel like inventory sorter is one of the the mods that i use more than anything else in the game one hit of the button bam everything's in order sometimes not necessarily what you want it to be in the position you want it to be should i say but generally speaking it always ends up kind of satisfying me so i would say that this is probably the most important mod to any of my gameplays okay other than that i use a, a mod called item scroller this is mostly for moving things in and around the inventory really quickly this is pretty much the only thing that i use it for so all you do in this case is you press shift and then you can just kind of glide along all of your inventory and swipe things in and out 
Uh, this was one that I didn't see being one of my favorite mods, but apparently it really is. And as for mods are concerned, my gameplay is still vanilla, guys. This is not a vanilla change. It is, if anything, just a slight quality of life difference, which I think makes a huge difference to my gameplay, but actually changes nothing about the base game of vanilla. The next one is one of the more important ones I use, like Massacre. This is mostly for really complicated redstone builds, or just redstone builds in general that are a little bit complicated. Sometimes you want to place things in the wrong, wrong place, in the wrong place, during the whole redstone contraption because you wasn't paying attention or you missed a bit of dust somewhere. I find using like Matica on, on anything redstone really comes in handy. And actually, sometimes when you want to build something up in creative, when you're not as good with building uh, like I am not, uh, it's great to build stuff in creative and then use like Matica just to give you a, you know, an idea of where things should be. And also, if you're going to build something in a part of the world and you've got something in creative, you want to see how it looks in the world before you actually place it down. Using like Matica is a really good mod. The next is Mini Hunt, which actually combines with Shulker Box Tooltip. This is something that you can actually get in Mini Hunt, but I end up getting the uh, individual Shulker Box Tooltip mod itself. Um, I think Mini Hunt, this actually covers a couple good things. So this is one of the things I use this for as a despawn sphere. This kind of gives you an outline of how, how much space you've got between mods spawning in yourself. This is mostly tools that I use for creative, by the way. These ones are just something I kind of get an idea when I'm using um, creative for like retro construction or like, for example, the skeleton farm that I made. It's something that I use quite often. But other than that, nothing really too useful for me, at least. But for sure, the shelter box escaping and the despawn sphere, two important parts of uh, Mini Hunt for me. Other than that, you can need mod menu to make any of this run. This isn't really a mod that you do anything with, but mod menu is one that you definitely need. Now, Octofabric is actually the foundation of my entire thing. You can see here that I am using Rocket Mod to, to, to run this game. This is mainly for two reasons. Number one, it helps optimization of the game, so it runs a little bit smoother. It changes nothing about the base game at all. Just makes sure that the game runs a lot smoother than it actually does in vanilla. And the second main reason I use Carpet Mod is for the tick warp feature. Carpet Mod is something that is mainly or almost entirely useful, basically, in only the vanilla point of the game. And the main reason I use it is to tick warp uh, to give me uh, uh, more chances to test redstone contraptions in lesser times. It, the amount of time that this has saved myself, and I'm sure many other redstoners or contraption makers or farm builders, this is a absolutely golden mod. And I thank you many, many times, Ben for your contribution to Carpet Mod. Mod. Uh, he's definitely one that you guys should check out if you don't follow his channel. He doesn't post often, but as far as advancements in farm building goes then one's the guy that you want to go to optifabric is another one that recently almost became completely extinct and almost made it so that i couldn't use carpet mod along with optifine and shaders so this is a huge mod again the only thing this allows me to do is to use optifine with fabric as you can see from the description here replay mod really only something that's useful for someone like myself who's uh, making youtube videos um, as it allows you to do nice time lapses and stuff great mod nothing really to talk about on it if you want to make cool replays with stuff and get cool angles replay mod is the one that you want uh, if you want to break down how to use replay mod extensively and get a good understanding of it pixel has made a two-part video on how to use replay mod make sure you check all that out again shulker box tooltips something that i use regularly great great mod all it pretty much allows you to do um, if i get a shulker box let's go ahead and place that down put some stuff in there and then break that, and then shulker box tooltip basically, you can hover over it, press shift, and that will give you an idea of what's inside, and if you press uh, alt at the same time, you can see the entire inventory of the shulker box, and it's color coded as well, you can see this is a black shulker box, this comes with a black outline for it, or black coloring for it too. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of this video, so the last thing I want to run through with you, the last two things, um, actually I'm actually a bit more than edit out of the way, well edit is a fantastic uh, tool for using when you're making like large redstone contraptions, sometimes you need to copy and paste this over multiple times, and it makes sure it just makes things a lot easier to kind of, when it comes to research and development of redstone stuff, well edit is way more important than I initially thought it was, and has come way more handy in recent times with helping me become a better builder, well edit is great, have a look at some videos that kind of give you a breakdown of that. Kukuru is one I recently added to my repertoire, but Kukuru, if you don't know, is a great uh, vanilla ish mod, I would say. And the main reason I use it is for crafting. I don't really want to get into too much of the details of the crafting system on Kukuru. All I can tell you is that when you want to craft a huge amount of items, Kukuru is almost the most important thing that you want. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I think I've covered pretty much everything that I used in this video. I'm sure it's not something that too many people were interested in, but for those who are, I've now got a video on it. And also, if anyone ever asks, I can now leave this in the description of all my videos. If anyone wants any information on this, anything else that I do, Make sure you subscribe and like, and I'll probably catch you on the next one. Bye.